Where is the missing universe? The universe exists, we know this much. But how much of it exists, and in what quantities? Well, that seems to change all the time, and in recent years, we've had to revise many theories due to some startling observations which indicate there isn't as much of the universe as we once thought. So let's find out why that is as we try to answer the question, where is the missing universe? Antimatter matters. Matter makes up the world around you. It forms the trees, geese, the air you breathe, tin peaches, the iron in the ground, the wasps in the sky, different geese, bounce houses, vanilla ice cream, strawberry ice cream, and, well, you get the picture. Basically, if something has mass, it is matter. But matter has a nemesis, an evil twin known as antimatter, which is the opposite of matter as it possesses a reverse electrical charge. Matter and antimatter don't get along so great, though, since they annihilate each other when they come into contact. It's like when you meet your time-traveling twin and shake hands. According to movies, that would make both of you explode. Then the same happens when matter and antimatter collide. They go kaboom. But according to our understanding of how the universe was formed, this reaction means that neither we nor our planet or universe should even exist at all. The Big Bang Theory, the idea, not the crappy TV show, asserts that equal parts matter and antimatter were created when the universe began many billions of years ago. And if that were true, our matter-based universe should have been annihilated by the embryonic antimatter universe before it had even begun. So where did all the antimatter go? Did it ever exist in the first place? Or have we just fundamentally misunderstood the nature of antimatter in some fundamental way? The latter may have been proven to be the case in a 2017 study where scientists discovered that certain types of matter and antimatter combinations don't behave as we originally thought. Another possibility is that antimatter and matter are different in ways we haven't yet been able to observe. Despite being opposites, matter and antimatter particles behave in a similar way. Recent research published in the journal Nature confirms this with said experiment constituting the most precise measurement of antimatter ever made. But even an observation of this extreme accuracy may not be enough to detect minute discrepancies between the behavior of the two substances, with even more precise studies required to unlock the secrets of why matter and antimatter don't seem to exist in equal quantities. Further theories state that antimatter does in fact exist in an equal quantity to matter, it's just all collected in certain areas of space, like crumbs in the corner of your pocket or cash in the bank accounts of rich old white dudes. We've actually seen a large antimatter cloud at the center of our own Milky Way. And some theories argue that whole antimatter galaxies may even exist elsewhere in the universe. But isn't it just our luck that just when we seem like we're on the cusp of discovering how much antimatter there is in the universe, we suddenly lose half of the regular matter we thought we already had. Missing matter. Half of the Milky Way is missing. Now, you heard me right. The galaxy in which we exist contains only 50% of the matter we think it should have. So what gives? Have we left those spiral arms in our glove box? Is the galactic bulge in our other set of pants? Those are as good of a guess as anything. The universe is made of mostly mysterious substances and forces which we don't yet fully understand. 68.3% of it consists of dark energy, 26.8% is dark matter, and the remaining 4.9% is made up of ordinary matter. The ratio of these three components is interesting in itself, as are the properties and behaviors of dark energy and matter. But what is even more intriguing is how matter, the thing we know most about, still manages to confuse and conflict us with its apparent absence in the universe. Thankfully, our matter-finding abilities have improved recently, as it was only last year when up to 90% of the universe's matter was beyond our detection. However, in 2017, the missing baryon problem was finally solved, and yet this still left us with a galaxy half full, or half empty if you're a pessimist. Even with the baryon problem answered, our observations of the Milky Way detected just half the matter we think it should possess. And nearby galaxies fall short too. 
coming up with a third less matter than calculations suggest. We think that supermassive black holes and supernovae are responsible for spreading the missing matter out in the first place, but we just don't know this for certain, and nor are we sure where it's all gone. To solve this mystery, one group of scientists has turned to a substance many of you know well, a product which has sustained you all these lonely nights binge-watching our channel until four in the morning. I am, of course, talking about Hot Pockets. Zheng Tao Li of the University of Michigan was the lead researcher on a paper called Baryon Budget of the Hot Circumgalactic Medium of Massive Spiral Galaxies, and it was his goal to find out exactly where all this missing matter was. To begin, his team made new observations of six nearby galaxies using the European Space Agency's XMM Newton X-ray Observatory. Their focus was the galactic halo, which is a diffuse, spherical region which surrounds the rest of the galaxy and which often extends many hundreds of thousands of light years across. Within this halo are hot pockets of low density gas, and Mr. Lee believed that this is where some of the missing matter may be. He was partially right, as when the data from six galaxies was combined to form an average, Shang To Li's team calculated that a significant amount of matter could be found within these clouds of gas. However, as was the case when we solved the baryon problem, the amount discovered was nowhere near enough to account for all the matter we're missing. Further investigations will attempt to solve this mystery by observing different phases of the gas clouds or by hunting in more distant parts of the galaxy. But for now, the mystery of the missing matter remains unsolved. Absent life. Why have we never detected life on other worlds? Why is it that life seems to be absent in every corner of the universe except ours? Humanity has never once detected the signs of sentient beings on a world other than Earth, not so much as a microbe. Is there a reason for this besides the idea that we are somehow special little creatures living on a special little planet of specialness? Yes, phosphorus. Delicious, piping hot phosphorus. According to a paper published back in 2013 by a team at the University of South Florida, phosphorus is not as abundant in the universe as we once thought. Huh, seems like nothing is these days. Are these science guys even trying hard? Hmm, so why does this matter? Well, phosphorus is essential to life, since it triggers the chemical reactions required to start the development of organisms. One of its compounds, adenosine triphosphate, is especially significant since it aids molecules with the storage and transference of energy. Without it, you could eat all the blueberries or cans of cheese whiz you want, but you'd still never take a single joule of energy no matter how much you consumed. Prior research indicates that phosphorus is created when stars go supernova, but exactly how much is generated is up for debate. In the above-mentioned study from South Florida, the research team used data gathered by the William Herschel Telescope to analyze the phosphoric content of the Crab Nebula, by far my favorite nebula because it's named after crabs. It was discovered that phosphorus was present in far lower quantities than we had first assumed, and this means that life may be less prevalent than even our most conservative estimate state today, with our own existence theorized to be courtesy of a fortuitous phosphorus meteorite shower some 3.5 billion years ago. Well, try saying that last sentence with a mouthful of cheese whiz. Actually, don't do that, because too much cheese whiz can and will kill you. I'm probably. Oh, and uh, speaking of too much, did you know that the universe is too bright? That's true, because according to a physics paper published in 2014, there's around 400% more light in the universe than there really should be. And we're going to find out why in our bonus video, The Bright Universe which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. 
chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.